Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Comic Source Comic Boom collaboration. Time for another Spawn Daily. We're up to issue number 35. So for those who may not be familiar with what we're doing, it's the 30th anniversary of Spawn, the 30th anniversary of Image Comics. So every day this year, although we have missed one day, apologies for that, uh, but for the most part, every day this year, we will be reading and talking about one issue of the main Spawn series. So the reason Rocky and I wanted to do this, if you're not aware, Todd McFarland is starting a new interconnected Spawn universe and hoping that it grows organically, to even contain characters at some point that aren't related to Spawn. So we want to check that stuff out and, and have read uh, some of the first issues of those other series that have come out. But there's so much that it's hard to relate to because I've never read Spawn and neither has Rocky. So, you know, it's not something where I, I, I've consciously have decided not to read Spawn. I just, one of those series that, you know, God, I, I feel like I need to go back to the beginning and get caught up and whatnot. And so we decided, hey, this year, 30th anniversary, why not r read that main series? So by the time the end of the year rolls around, the end of 2022, there will be a, between 330 and 340 issues of the main Spawn comic. So that means if we cover one a day, we should finish you know, well before the end of the year, um, assuming that we don't miss a bunch uh, more days. So uh, that's our plan. And we've been cruising right along. We did in the 12 days leading up to Christmas, the 12 days of Spawn Miss, where we've covered the first 12 issues. And now we are up to issue uh, 35. So there's been a lot going on. These books really do stand up. I think Rocky and I were both very surprised, uh, pleasantly surprised, and, and sort of drawn in. Uh, pleasantly surprised with how well these books really hold up. They are a little bit of their time. They can be expositional. It's a little bit because that's how comics were back in the 90s, and it's a little bit that's just the style of, of Todd McFarlane. He's very verbose. He's very wordy in his writing. Uh, but the ideas and the concepts hold up really well, and uh, and they're pulling us in, the mysteries and, and whatnot. As far as the, the backbone of the structure, I think it's done uh, it's done pretty well. So let's go ahead and dive into the issue. If you're checking us out on YouTube, I'm going to go ahead and uh, and share my screen. We see uh, a salmon twitch cover that looks really cool. There's some, they're clearly in an alley. There's bricks behind him saying wanted spawn uh, covered by Capullo and McFarlane. When we look at the credits, there's one thing I want to point out. For the first time, we see Capullo credited with pencils and McFarlane with ink. For the last few issues, it's been Todd McFarlane on story and then artists just Capullo and McFarlane listed, as opposed to us being told specifically here, hey, Greg Capullo is doing the pencils and Todd McFarlane is doing the inks. So what I'm wondering is if in the, the more recent issues, if, if it wasn't maybe... McFarlane doing some some layout, some thumbnail type stuff, and then Capullo doing everything else, and then Mc, or or maybe doing tighter pencils, and then um, McFarlane come and and finish it up with inks. And maybe that's why they were listed. I mean, it's hard to know, but obviously we know here Capullo is now doing pencils, and maybe it was just a matter of Todd was saying, "Hey." I'm going to go ahead and do the thumbnails, the layouts to lay out the panels so that Greg can kind of understand what, you know, my sense of storytelling. And then after doing that for so long, Todd's like, maybe he got too busy or maybe he just decided, I think Greg gets it now. Like he understands kind of the aesthetic of Spawn or the, the kinetic feel of the way the panels are laid out. So either way, I do find it interesting. I did notice it. So I thought I, I would point it out here on this issue. Uh, Tom Orzakowski does the letters. Steve Olaf and Quinn Supley and Oli Optics on colors. We have a special thanks to Kevin Conrad and Julia Simpson. Uh, we see on this first splash page, and you'll notice, or one thing I noticed, is how much finer the lines are. So I thought that was a little interesting. Again, why would it look uh, so different? Why would the, the style of art look different at all? Well, it's listed differently in those credits, right? So that's probably part of it. So anyway... Uh, we see from the, uh, the splash page that Twitch is back. We know he got injured in the Blood Feud miniseries. He's been in the hospital. We've seen that in the last couple of issues. Um, there's a little bit of a confrontation at the party between Sam Burke and Chief Banks. We know there's no love lost there. 
long before Sam Burke received the file from Spawn uh, about banks being involved in a bunch of illegal stuff, up to and including the fact that he was the one that hired Billy Kincaid to kill the senator's child. So Sam, uh, one thing you can say about Sam Burke is he definitely has a, a very highly developed sense of justice. Uh, and and you can tell he's sort of holding back his anger. Like he wants nothing more than to rip cheap banks from limb to limb. He certainly feels like banks probably deserves that. Um, but one of the bad things he, he's doing is he's, he's, he's sort of letting on to chief banks that, that he's the one that left the note threatening banks, that he's the one that has the, the knowledge, but he just hasn't been able to find enough concrete proof yet. We're not exactly sure what's in the file. So uh, maybe it's the, the file, if it contains paperwork, maybe it can be doctored, can't prove it, it's actually real. He's looking for the smoking gun. So when, uh, when Banks heads off, Sam, uh, he does mention, um, one of the, the other detectives does mention to Chief Banks that, uh, that Sam's been poking around in his direction. And Banks, he's like, oh, you know, I appreciate that. It's kind of interesting that one of the other detectives would kind of rat on Banks. Maybe Banks is not really, uh, or rat on uh, Sam Burke, rather. Maybe Burke is not that, not that well-liked among his colleagues other than Twitch. So Sam and Twitch are then in their office, and they're talking about how they haven't been able to find uh, any any concrete proof. And Burke tells us, he's like, yeah, yeah, I know it's a risk, but I just keep hoping if I keep hinting at things, if I keep putting pressure on him, that will crack. So does make sense in a way what he's doing and i'm glad uh, mcfarland put this in here i think it's a good a good way to have the story unfold because i had those questions like sam burke is smart enough to not let on like if you're investigating somebody don't let him know he's under investigation just keep a close eye but apparently burke exhausted all those avenues and wasn't able to find anything so now he's hoping by rattling banks that banks will make a mistake so twitch twitch is just happy that burke stayed on the case you know because burke had come to the hospital and had said to him Maybe he was going to pursue the Spawn case because it was, you know, Spawn involvement, or Spawn kind of events or incidents that happened that landed Twitch in the hospital in the first place. So Burke was focused on that, and Twitch was like, no, don't worry about me. Go after Banks. He's the one that, that we need to, to bring to justice. So uh, we leave them there for now. We travel back to the alley. Cogliostro is talking to Spawn, um, basically telling him, you know, you need to do a better job. Uh, we saw last issue where Cogliostro was telling Spawn by playing into his instincts and killing the drug dealer. He was doing exactly what Hell wanted. And so what he needs to concentrate on now is how to use his powers more efficiently. He even says how to kill more efficiently and how to ignore the consequences of those kills. So it's, it's kind of interesting. You know, I talked last time about this idea that Spawn has let people live in the past, but then he's killed people. So it's... It's that inconsistency, and why is that happening? Is it just the inconsistency of the writing from McFarlane, or is there a deeper meaning behind it? Uh, but to hear Cogliostro saying, kill, kill more efficiently, you know, Cogliostro was the one that scolded Spawn for killing it all last issue. So uh, kind of interesting. And Spawn, Spawn's kind of pushing back on it, uh, trying to understand. And Cogliostro's like, you know, you've, you've got to make the most of your training here on Earth. Um, you know, to get what you want. And there's an X factor that, that nobody has, has thought about yet. And Spawn's like, well, what's that? He's like, your uniform. Your uniform is very dangerous to the forces of hell. And Spawn's, you know, he doesn't understand why. And Cogliaster is saying, your outfit, you, you've probably felt and seen the transformation in it recently. And, and it should have taken another seven years for your, your costume to evolve. Yet it already has. And Spawn's like, well, what are you saying? I, I'm some kind of super Spawn? And Cogliostro, for once, doesn't actually have an answer. He's like, I, I don't know. None of us have ever seen this before, but the answers are, are within you. So just be sure you're using your costume to your advantage and not theirs. And Spawn's like, you know what? I've heard enough of your crazy old man. Um, you don't even have a clue. And at that point, Cogliostro touches Spawn. Just straight up uh, index finger in the face. And when he touches Spawn... Spawn's costume kind of goes a little nuts, and he gets all these images in his mind reminding him that this is all the fault of Jason Wynn. Jason Wynn's the one who plotted against him, didn't 
agree with kind of the righteousness, the moral code that Al Simmons was adhering to more and more. He's the one that sent chapel, gave the orders. He's really the one that, that ruined Al Simmons' life. And so it's that reminder of, hey, this is your mission, right? This is why you came back because Malbolgia used your love of your wife to take advantage. And at the end of the day, this is the guy that's sort of behind all of your, um, all of your problems, right? So my, I will ask the question again, why the heck hasn't he killed Jason Wynn yet? That's, that's the real mystery here. And Spawn even yells out, Wynn, damn you. Uh, he's all mad. And so we learn one more thing about the costume here as Cogliostro starts to, to walk away. We're told that the, the, Neural parasite costume has been invigorated, right? It, Cogliostro, in a lot of ways, has has charged it up because this symbiotic costume it thrives on sensory input, and Al has just had a ton of sensory input because of the visions that he's just seen. So as Cogliostro walks away, he asks Spawn if he's okay. He says, "Yeah, I'm fine," and Cogliostro says, well, "Okay, then your mission should be clear." Now, I do find it interesting that. Cognastro has known all this time about Jason Wynn, but he hasn't specifically given Spawn really any missions or orders or you should do this or you should do that. But now all of a sudden he's he's sort of pointing them like a loaded gun at, at Jason Wynn. And you wonder, okay, well, why is that happening? Cognastro seems to be an agent for heaven in a lot of ways, but maybe not overt. You know, we are told that there are neutral parties who are interested, you know, or, or I shouldn't say neutral parties, but parties that aren't aligned with heaven, they're not aligned with hell. They maybe have their own agenda, but very interested in what happens. And it seems like that's the organization that Cogliostro may be uh, involved with. So why, but why now? Why point Spawn at Win now? Well, the only thing I can think is because as we saw last issue, the violator approached Jason Wynn, kind of revealed that they have Spawn as a common enemy and is now teamed up with Jason Wynn. So I'm assuming that Cogliostro knows about that, and that's the reason he wants Spawn to go after Wynn. That's the reason he's reminding Spawn, and in a way trying to provoke Spawn to go after Jason Wynn, which again, you would think after all the pain that Jason Wynn has caused him, it wouldn't be necessary to, to provoke Spawn into uh, attacking Wynn. Meanwhile, in Wynn's office, he's talking to Terry Fitzgerald, continuing the conversation we saw last issue, trying to gain Fitzgerald's confidence, trying to buddy up with him, get really close. And again, all this per the advice slash orders of the violators saying, hey, get, get really close to Fitzgerald, but at the same time, push the buttons and, and cause havoc with Wanda and, uh, and Wanda's grandmother, which that's interesting what's going on there. We'll, we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Um, so Wynn seems to be giving a lot of responsibility to Terry Fitzgerald, but we know it's simply a case of, hey, keep your, keep your, en your friends close and your enemies closer, right? So then Wynn reaches out to, um, to Chief Burke, and he's telling, or Chief Banks, rather, and he's telling Banks, hey, I'm running out of patience. How would one of your subordinates know about Billy Kincaid and our connection to him. And Banks says, um, I don't know how he knows, but I have an idea of, of who it might be now. He, like he's, he very much suspects that it's uh, Sam Burke. And so Wynn is saying, well, you must have received the file too. Spawn gave it to me. So how could this detective have gotten it? And Wynn's like, no detective could have gotten it. Spawn must have given it to the detective too. So that that's who you need to be going after. He's right in your backyard. Spawn's living in the alleys in your precinct. Go and find him and take care of him. Um, and Wynn's like, you know, I, I don't understand. You need to act on this swiftly. And so Banks is like, okay, you can count on me. When you know, retorts, uh, not so far. I haven't been able to, but uh, at least again, Banks apparently not very bright. Uh, but you can count on Jason Wynn, say what you will about him. The guy's a brilliant tactician and, and a really intelligent guy. So he's figured out, and again, partly on orders from, from Violator that they want Spawn kind of softened up and, and you know vulnerable for the kill. Wynn has aimed the NYPD at Spawn. So 
Uh, we do get a quick interlude here with Wanda and baby Cyan and the grandmother. And this is what I was talking about with, uh, with Wynn supposedly pushing, uh, turning the screws, or I think that's how the violator put it, like butter up to Terry Fitzgerald, be super nice to him, make sure things are going well for him, but then have things going poorly for Wanda and, uh, and the grandmother, and that will drive Al Simmons crazy. Interesting, like, so maybe he's going to pull the rug out from under them, because what Wynn's done so far have been very, very good things for, uh, for Wanda and the grandmother. Wanda's running this ch uh, children's hospital charity, received a massive anonymous donation. We find out that Grandma Blake has been having trouble with her uh, late husband's pension check from the government, and the IRS has been involved and everything, and all of a sudden she got a call saying, okay, we figured it out, the payments are going to continue, the case is closed. And uh, it, it was so bad, it was to the point that uh, Grandma Blake was thinking she might have to sell her house. But now those troubles have all gone away. So all I can think is if, if Wynn is looking to to put the screws on them to make things go badly for them, that he's he's lifting them up so he can crash them back down, you know, so the fall will be uh, that much bigger. So meanwhile, back at the precinct, one of uh, the colleagues of uh, Sam and Twitch, so maybe Sam is not. Uh, universally disliked by his colleagues comes in and says hey chief banks just took a couple uniforms and headed off to that alley where that spawn guy is and since it's your case i thought you might want to know so sam and twitch you know they can put two and two together they know what's going on with kincaid uh and the involvement with uh with chief banks and whatnot and so they got to think well what the heck is banks doing he doesn't have any idea what he's walking into spawn could could kill him he's not somebody to take lightly so in a way, they want to protect, and in a way, they probably want to understand what's going on. So they go chasing after uh, Banks and the uniforms. Meanwhile, the uniforms are kind of roughing up some guys in the alley. Of course, the homeless are not going to betray Spawn. They're giving smart uh, answers and whatnot, which only leads to them getting thumped a little bit more. Meanwhile, Spawn is watching this and getting you know more and more angry, um, and he's not going to be able to help himself from, from revealing himself. But... Uh, we know Spawn should be able to take care of himself against some uniformed police officers and, and banks. So over the period of a few hours, they do eventually find their way to the dead end alley where Spawn's throne is that they built him. And uh, they're examining it, trying to figure out, like, what, do they worship this guy as a king? Like, what the heck is going on? So Spawn sneaks up behind him. He takes out the two uniformed guys. And as he hears Banks wondering aloud, do they worship this guy as a king? Spawn answers, no, they're just thankful, you know, thankful that I, I help protect them. And uh, Spawn's like, why didn't you read the file that I sent your way? What are you doing here? Are you suicidal? I told you to leave me alone. Don't mess with me. And Banks is like, what, what file? What are you talking about? Um, and at that moment, Sam and Twitch show up and Samuel's out, freeze. Spawn turns around like, why didn't you give him the file? And Sam says, there, there's too much good stuff in it. Isn't that right, Banks? Like stuff about Billy Kincaid, right? So Sam wasn't about to turn it over. He wanted to nail Banks himself. So apparently uh, Spawn never looked that closely at the file either. Because when he hears the name Kincaid, he turns around to Banks and says, Kincaid, what do you have to do with that butcher? And Sam's like, stop it, Spawn. You, gotta, you both have a lot to answer for. You and Banks, you're both coming with me. And he's threatening to, to shoot Spawn. So Spawn's like, um, we've been down this road before. Um, we both know that gun's not going to do anything. So you might as well put it down. And Sam's like, well, maybe, maybe not. But why don't we just see how long it takes you to grow back your head if I blow it off your shoulders? It's kind of difficult to run away with no eyeballs. So Spawn, obviously not wanting to spend the energy, feels like, in this case, discretion is the better part of valor. And actually allows his costume to take out Sam and Twitch, which we see in the bottom left panel there. We just see the chains of the costume. Well, first we see uh, some tendrils of the cape kind of snaking around the feet of Sam and Twitch. And then we just see um, the, the chains knocking away the, the guns that were trained on spawn. We don't really see any sort of fight. It's happened really quickly. And before either Sam or Twitch are able to defend against the costume or stand up, Spawn's already gone. So going to be interesting to see what the fallout of that is in terms of now it's out in the open, right? They've talked about the file. 
with Spawn and with Chief Banks right there in front of Chief Banks, Sam and Twitch, Banks, like it's going to come to a head. You know, what's Jason Wynn going to say or do about this particular uh, event? Certainly it didn't go the way the violator would have wanted. Spawn is in no way softened up by this uh, or made more vulnerable. So I guess we'll have to wait and see how that plays out. Uh, meanwhile, we get a scene of Terry and uh, Wanda and little baby Cyan kind of catching up, just letting us know what's going on. Terry's talking about being in the inner circle now for Wynn, and he's not sure, does is Wynn on to him and Wynn trying to keep him real close to set him up again? Or does Wynn really not know that Terry's trying to get the, the goods on Wynn? There's no way to really know. He's got to just keep doing what he's doing. Uh, meanwhile, Wanda mentions the, the really large donation she got and how they're going to be able to start building the uh, uh, urgent care ward at the children's hospital. So again, in my mind, I'm thinking if you want to mess with Wanda, like get that started, get that children's ward started. And then all of a sudden, you know, pull back that anonymous donation, just take the money back. Um, how much stress and strife that would cause for her. So I'm assuming that's what Wynn is going to going to do. We'll have to wait and see. Um, so meanwhile, after the, uh, confrontation in the alley and the, uh, the moment with Cagliostro where he touched Spawn's face and Spawn was reminded that at the end of the day, all his problems can be traced back to Jason Wynn. Spawn goes to confront Wynn in his office and, uh, again, talks to Wynn in a way that seems familiar, right? Because Al Simmons obviously knows who Jason Wynn is, but it doesn't go the other way. Jason Wynn doesn't know who Spawn is. And you would think by now, with all the things that Spawn has said, and I mentioned earlier, Jason Wynn is no dummy, that he would have figured it out by now, but he still hasn't been able to put two and two together. Um, because when Spawn shows up there and Wynn's like, what do you want? He says, everything. I want my wife, my life, my, my normality. And Wynn's like, what, what are you? Like, you? I'm exactly what you made me. I'm nothing. And I'm here to even the score. It's my turn to kill you. So you think, oh, finally, finally, uh, Jason Wynn's going to get what's coming to him. So, again, Spawn makes some hints about being eliminated and, and you know, Wynn being behind it all and it being Wynn's fault. And Wynn's like, you're insane. Spawn's like, no, I, I, I don't know what makes me more sick, that you don't even have a clue who I am or all the blood you've spilled over the years and i'm like if it makes i'm thinking if it makes you sick al why don't you just tell him why why do you why don't you just tell him it's kind of strange so when again so with some degree of bravado saying you know what you kill me you won't get 10 feet before you're a dead man so al inflicts a little torture on him snaps his arm and says you can't kill somebody who's already dead you know so uh at that moment apparently due to, to sensors in Wynn's office, maybe because all these supernatural beings have been showing up there left and right. You know, Violator showed up, now Spawn. Um, Wynn's office doors are thrown open. All these security guards come in, and a voice off panel says, take a step back, Spawn, nice and slow. And when Spawn turns to look, who's leading the security forces? But Terry Fitzgerald himself. And Spawn's like, not you too, Terry. Is everybody being controlled by this devil? And, uh, and Terry says, well, it's not that simple. And that's where uh, it all ends with uh, Spawn's energy counter there at 6887, and we're told next issue, Betrayal and Pain. So, yeah, it's it, kind of interesting in terms of, of, of Al Simmons getting so mad that, um, that Jason Wynn doesn't know who he is, but yet he doesn't seem willing to tell him who it is. Maybe, maybe that's the point. He's like, God, have you, have you done so much damage? Have you hurt so many people over the course of your career, Jason Wynn, that you can't even remember it. It's almost like he wants Win to make that realization. Oh, I know who you are. I know what person I've done all these horrible things to. You must be Al Simmons. And then at that point, Al Simmons is like, yeah, remember my name or, you know, die with my name on your lips or, or whatever. Um, but it still doesn't explain why Al hasn't killed him previously. Again, the thing that I go back to that, that's been bugging me about the last 10 issues or so is just the inconsistency of when Al's going to kill somebody and when not. Um, or why does he choose to kill some people and, and not others? So, uh, again, it's a minor nitpick. I think overall the story is really good. Um, there's enough mystery. There's enough tension and drama going on. All these moving parts, all these different factions, although the, the Violator faction and the Wind faction have obviously aligned. 
if Terry wants out from under when you do one uh, also think like, um, well, why don't you just let Spawn take him out, Terry? But I don't know, maybe Terry's sense of responsibility to, to justice or the law is preventing that. Not really sure. Would Terry's feeling or outlook on this be any different if he knew that Al Simmons and Spawn were one and the same? right? Because that's still being kept from Terry. Terry still doesn't know uh, that either. So yeah, again, a lot of moving parts, really interesting. Drama's ratcheting up. Um, it feels like previously we, we talked a lot about how the book would focus on the heaven versus hell aspect of the story, supernatural aspect of the story, or it would be focusing on the, the history of Al Simmons kind of the earthly issues and problems with Wynn and the NYPD and FBI and all that sort of thing. Uh, and it would cite, we'd have, you know, like a big four or five, six issue arc about one part of the story. And then we'd switch back. It does seem like that switch is happening quicker now. You know, we, we recently had the issue with the fight in the tower of, of um, the heaven forces on earth. Um, and that was just a couple of, uh, of issues long. And now for the last couple of issues, we focused a little more, on um on the earthly side of things but even when we do that we're getting little interludes of the other part of the story so it seems like those those two sort of disparate storylines that are sort of the two sides of al simmons life as spawn um are being more closely wound together and you could even say becoming intertwined if you talk about violator and win like agreeing to team up so i feel like that provides a more cohesive narrative as well and allows uh, McFarlane and Capullo to tell a story where you're really touching on, you know, each issue, each, each individual issue gets to touch on all aspects of, of Spawn's life. So they're getting better. And we're also, for the last few issues, we're really not getting those giant info dumps, right? And I wonder how much of that is the fact that, uh, that Capullo is writing it now, or sorry, Capullo is drawing it now, as opposed to when Spawn uh, Todd was writing and drawing it. He's probably like, okay, I'm going to draw it this way because I know I'm going to have this giant wall of text. I, c I can't actually remember when we had a giant wall of text. I mean, we do get a few pages. There's even one in this issue. Let me um, bring it back up where uh, it, it's not a wall of text, but the the art, there's not a lot going on, right? Like you can see this uh, this page here if you're checking us out on YouTube. So uh, we, we get like somewhat of a city skyline in the background, and then we get these uh, long vertical insets where it's just pictures of the alley that's, um, that zooms in from panel to panel. You know, we start and we see kind of the, the beginning of the alley. We zoom in a little closer. We see fence, part of a trash can. We zoom in a little closer. We see the rats. We zoom in a little closer. We see rats and um, some buildings in the background that are part of the same skyline we see at the top. And we do have some voiceover stuff here of uh of cog astro talking so it's sort of you know th th this art here it's not advancing the story that the art although it's sequential isn't it's more about building mood and, and establishing setting as opposed to you know giving us a, a sense of of movement forward in the narrative of the story and we get quite a bit of dialogue but it, this is nowhere near the amount of dialogue we got on those on those walls of text in the early um in the early McFarlane issues when, when Todd was both writing and drawing it. So maybe he's finding his footing as a writer. Maybe he's realizing that he can let Capullo's pencils tell more of the story than, uh, than he was with his own pencils. Uh, but it's, it's telling it, and it's good that uh, McFarlane is doing that. I mean, there's still times in the book in this issue where we do have some dialogue that tells us exactly what we're seeing on the page in terms of the, the illustration. Uh, but it's much less than it than it used to be uh, and getting better. So lots to unpack for this one, for sure. I think the thing that has me most curious is that dynamic between Chief Banks and Sam and Twitch. Now that that conversation has happened between the, those three and Spawn, the knowledge of the file is out in the open. There's no doubt anymore between Banks and Sam and Twitch about them having the file, them having the information, knowing what Chief Banks did, and Banks knows 100% that it's Sam and Twitch now that uh, that's or Sam, at least that sent the note. And how does that play out? What's the fallout from that? So uh, maybe we'll find out next issue. Maybe McFarlane will pivot away. 
we'll get some more heaven and hell stuff uh, in the next issue. Who knows? Haven't read it yet. We'll have to wait and see. So anyway, that's going to do it for this episode of Spawn Daily, everybody. Hope you really enjoyed it. Don't forget, if you're checking us out on the auto audio only, uh, please go over to the YouTube channel and subscribe to the Comic Boom YouTube channel. Uh, that All that kind of thing really helps out with our access, and, and uh, it allows you to see the, uh, the book as we're talking about it in terms of the art. So just go to YouTube, do a search for Comic Space Boom! Exclamation point. That's Rocky's channel. Subscribe. Make sure you ring the notification bell so you know when new content comes out and like this video. Uh, conversely, if you came across us and, or you know, you're, you're doing some sort of research on Spawn and that's how you found Spawn Daily and you want to know more about not only Spawn, but here are all the interviews that we do on the Comic Source, here are DC Spotlights, our New Comics Wednesdays, and all the other content we put out audio only, be sure you go over to your favorite podcasting app on your smart device or favorite podcasting platform, Stitcher, Google Play, iTunes, Spotify, whatever it is. Just go to that, uh, that podcast platform, do a search for the Comic Source and subscribe. That way you don't miss any of the content we put out on the other channels. So uh, we really appreciate everybody joining us as always, and we will talk to you next time.